Okay, there are like too many queer books for me to count how much I just love them and want them to become a part of my soul, but let's name a few. Pride to me means family. It means a place to call home, finding people who will love and accept me at every stage of my life. I think for me, pride is just about saying I'm here and this is who I am and I'm not going to change that or be ashamed of it just because other people feel like there's something wrong with me. I was around, actually. I was a kid when Pride first started uh, in the 1970s. It's always been to me a way of countering the misinformation, the, uh, the narrative that being part of the LGBT community was somehow strange or bad. And it was a way to flip that and to celebrate who we were and to come together and to show our solidarity. To me, the heart of pride is a way to speed up the process of shedding all those terrible assumptions around queerness that we were given as children. You can find your people and come together and celebrate and realize how amazingly awesome it is to be queer. Pride to me means just getting to be yourself, lady. I mean, come on. Pride to me is that moment where I'm watching a TV show and a character turns out to be a lesbian and I get really excited and I sort of nudge whoever's with me and I'm like, oh my God, it's a lesbian on the TV. Pride with a capital P is about remembering and honoring our history. Queer and trans people have always existed, but we have fought to be here. And there's so much work that's still left to be done. Pride to me is this joyful freedom, hard-won freedom to not be afraid anymore. To not be afraid of who you are, to not be afraid of what people will think of you, to not have to hate yourself and hide yourself, but instead be able to love yourself and celebrate yourself. It's a gift and it's something that we all deserve. I am most proud of, I have to say, my son who went away to college this year in the middle of a pandemic and he not only survived, but he thrived. My book, or if that's too cliche, I'm really proud of the fact that I can still list every US president in chronological order. I'm most proud of getting a book published, Jay's Gay Agenda, that is all about ending the shame spiral of same-sex attraction or outside the binary attraction. I think the thing I'm most proud of is just still being here and still writing you know, 15 years down the line. I think my relationship with my parents as I've become an adult and as they've grown up too, because we always forget that parents are growing and evolving. They're some of my best friends now and I'm really proud of that. Love and Other Natural Disasters is about what happens when the reality of love, real life love, what happens when that reality collides with our hopes and our dreams and our expectations, which are often unrealistic. It's about learning to compromise without giving up hope. I hope that people take that away from this book, that um, even though love doesn't always live up to what we hope and dream for, it's still worth pursuing and we should never give up hope. My book is all about how you're never too much to have the perfect happily ever after. And I hope readers take from the book that they can ask for that happiness and they deserve it. And they don't have to compromise or give in because other people try to impose their beliefs on them. I hope readers take away from Jay that it's okay to make mistakes when you're seen as a romantic and a sexual being for the very first time. There's gonna be like this huge rush to get everything done. Like you wanna kiss people, you wanna make out with people, you wanna get to the nitty gritty. And that's gonna mean that a lot of your other relationships will kind of take a back burner. And that's just the wonderful complicated layer of being a young adult, but you can do it and it's great. I hope queer and trans readers take away from my book that they are deserving of unconditional support, acceptance, and love. But those things are far from guaranteed. The struggle is far from over, and we all have to work together to fight for those rights. I'm hoping that people will read my book, All Kinds of Other, and understand that there is an infinite variety of human expression in this world. So The Darkness Outside Us is a way to explore what the future 400 years from now might look like. Um, and Earth is down to just two countries, and each of these two boys who are on the spaceship are from 
one of the countries. When one astronaut asks the other, you know, are you bisexual or what? He's just like, he laughs. It sounds like it's out of like historical movie. So I really loved to imagine a world where queerness could be radically accepted. Um, and in fact, the, the last chapter, not to give away any details, um, is kind of like a militant imagining of what a queer future might look like. Running with Lions, How to Be Remy Cameron by Julian Winters, Felix Ever After by Case and Calendar, You Should See Me in a Crown, Leah Johnson, anything by Becky Albertalli, uh, Phil Stamper's uh, The Gravity of Us, and as far as you'll take me, Elsie Rosen's Jack of Hearts and Other Parts. That's just a beautiful sex positive book. Everything by Adam Silvera. The Cemetery Boys by Aidan Thomas. Like this could go on and on forever. And I love Rainbow Power. Juliet takes a breath. I love the novel and the graphic novel is getting ready to come out soon. Uh, another graphic novel that I'm really excited about is I Am Not Starfire. That comes out really soon. I love total fangirl for red white and royal blue felix ever after is another great and then like a love story felix ever after by case and calendar just so beautifully written pet by Ekweke emetsi simon versus the homo sapiens agenda i was so obsessed with that book for so long would really recommend love is for losers uh, it's very funny very sweet and the character's voice just sort of leaps off the page it's wonderful Hurricane Season by Nicole Mellaby. Um, it's a middle grade novel account of a, a girl who is coming into her own queer identity and helping her father who's also coming into his. Obviously, Red, White and Royal Blue, Felix Ever After, Stone Butch Blues, You Should See Me in a Crown, Darius Great is Not Okay, Like a Love Story. I could keep going. Uh, please stop me now. <laughs> drag culture. I love it. It's constantly breaking its own rules. I love that you can be or do anything. There's room for drag kings, drag queens, people who want to uh, swing back and forth between being a king or a queen or are finding themselves somewhere in the middle. Like I just, there's really a place for anyone in drag. I feel like the best part about queer culture for me is just the freedom. It's all about saying I don't need any of this heteronormativity or any of these harsh restrictions that are placed on your body because of your gender, because of who you love, because of how you experience romantic or sexual attraction. And I think that's just an amazing feeling to say, you know, this is my life. I can do what I want with it. And I don't have to restrain myself and try to fit into these standards that really most people were never meant to fit. The thing I love about queer culture is that we can be equal parts loving and fierce. There's a gentleness, a tenderness that we have with each other, but at the same time, we can be super strong together and we can protect ourselves and protect each other and that we are so strong as a community. Gay bookstores. And I don't just mean, you know, the little queer section at your local indie, but that's great. I mean, the gay bookstores that are, you know, wall to wall, gay books, where there's every everything you could possibly imagine and tons of things you've never thought to imagine. They're dying breeds. So if you can find one in a town near you, go there, buy books, support it, love it. It will love you back. The thing I love about queer culture is I think that people are so supportive. You know, there are people who don't know me, um, who are rooting for me because we're just in the same community. And I, and I think that that's really lovely and, and really powerful. My absolute favorite part about queer culture and just being queer in general is that we don't have to have all the answers right this second. We can continually evolve. Like I knew I was gay from a very, very, very young age, but it wasn't until decades later that I found out that I was genderqueer or discovered that I was genderqueer and that's okay. We have all the time in the world to figure out what makes us us and express our hearts. And I'm so excited for that journey for you and that we all get to be a part of this queer family and this queer culture together. Thank you.